right, the time is 7.35. I'll call this regular business and public hearing of the mayor and council to order. Today is Monday, November 11th, 2013. We have all members of the mayor and council present. Uh, tonight for the invocation, we're going to have a double invocation. First, we're going to have a moment of silence uh, today for all of our veterans who have served in our military in honor of Veterans Day. Thank you, and thank you to veterans everywhere. Now we also have Father Hinault um, from St. Oliver Pluckett Catholic Church to lead us in a prayer. O oh God, our Father, King of the universe, you created the world in us in your own image and likeness. And you charge us to care for that world in all its splendor and all its wonder. We pray this night for our mayor, for our councilmen and women. Help them, guide them, lead them. Help them to build Snellville into the best city that we could ever live in. Help each and every one of us who are citizens of Snellville and friends of Snellville to do our best to be supportive and caring, to always stay close to you and in your love. We pray. Amen. Thank you, Father. Now for tonight's announcements. Tomorrow at 6 o'clock we'll have a Snellville Days committee meeting. If you're interested in volunteering or helping with the planning of Snellville Days, you can meet at the Betty B. McMichael Room at Briscoe Park. Uh, we'll also have a Board of Appeals meeting tomorrow. Uh, the work session will start at 6.45 instead of 7 o'clock and the meeting will be at 7.30 p.m. here at City Hall. On November 24th, you can watch a rebroadcast of this council meeting on Comcast Channel 25 at 6.30 p.m. Our next regular scheduled council meeting will be November 25th with a 6.30 p.m. work session and a 7.30 p.m. meeting. The November 26th Planning Commission meeting has been canceled. And on November 28th and 29th for the Thanksgiving holidays, City Hall and all city offices with the exception of emergency services, will be closed. And now for the Pledge to the Flag, we have members of our local VFW to lead us in the pledge. Under ceremonial matters, we have the swearing-in ceremony. First, we have uh, Tom Witz for post three, and swearing him in will be uh, Judge Mark Lang. <laughs> he, he maybe went to get his...
state of Georgia. have Bobby Howard post four being sworn in by Melvin Everson. Barbara Bender, post five, being sworn in by Judge Mark Lang. Now we have the minutes. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes of the October 28, 2013 business and public hearing meeting? Motion to approve. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All those in favor of the motion signify by raising your right hand. That's six in favor. All those opposed, zero opposed. The minutes stand approved. She'll catch on. Tonight, we have no invited guests on our agenda. However, I see that we have Representative Brett Harold here and also Mayor-elect Allison Wilkinson from the City of Grayson. So thank you all for joining us tonight. And now for our committee and department reports, we have the Snellville Public Arts Commission, Chairman uh, Kirk Bice. Thank you. Um, the projects that we are working on right now, uh, first off, we are creating a scavenger hunt for our children, our youth, to be located here around uh, City Hall. It's going to be such a cool program. Kids and families are going to enjoy it because they're going to go from little sculpture to sculpture, following a, a, a poem with clues and things like that. Uh, we are looking for 
some sponsors, businesses or individuals who are willing to uh, sponsor different sculptures. So if you're interested in that, please see uh, me or Diane Krause. Uh, I think she would be happy to see folks step up for that uh, also. Uh, the second thing, second project we have coming up is our Christmas Carol fundraiser. Thank you, first off, to Summit Chase for sponsoring this. This is a, a dinner and a show and a silent auction and uh, all of our mayor and city council have agreed to take parts in that show. So I, I really want to thank all of you for doing that. Uh, get those, get that one? Well, no. Uh, they're going to show their support in more than just, uh, just being there. They're, they're going to buy a ticket also. Uh, except for Dave, because he's actually a member of the cast and he's in the show big time. So please, everybody come out, uh, get your reservations by calling Summit Chase. Uh, and I think it's going to be an enjoyable evening for everybody. The show's fun, uh, silent auction. What's that? That's right, that's right, humbug. Um, uh, the silent auction is going to have artwork, theater tickets, jewelry, uh, and things like that. And all of this money is going towards uh, placing some public sculptures here in the city of Snellville. So it's a, it's a good thing. As, as I note here, it's not going to be too long before the words Snellville and arts are synonyms. That's our goal uh, for the Snellville Arts Commission. Uh, other projects that we are working on, uh, developing the performance space here at City Hall in the room right across the, uh, the, the way here uh, for things like a book signing. On January 30th, we're having the author Bill Fitz some of you may have heard of his series of books called Needed Killing, which I haven't read myself, but you can actually download the first one for free. He Needed Killing. Uh, but he's coming with, uh, with his wife, Ann Gibbons, his publisher, to uh, talk about the books. Uh, and book talks are something that we would like to, uh, to develop more of. And the last couple projects that we're working on, murals on buildings, getting some paintings done on, on some buildings, uh, planters around the downtown area. Uh, our new artist in the gallery is Mickey Dillon. Uh, if you have a chance, please go see uh, her work. That's, that's excellent. And long term, we've got, uh, we're talking about doing a ghost tour in the historical cemetery next October. Our meeting, our next meeting is next Monday. Um, starts at 5 o'clock, goes from 5 to 7, and we invite everybody who is interested in the arts to please and that's not just you guys, that's all of you back here. Uh, if you are interested in the arts, please come to a meeting, 5 to 7 o'clock, uh, right over here in the, uh, the little room. If we get too many people, we'll move to the community room. That would be a, a good problem to have. And I believe that's my spiel. Any questions about anything or comments? Thank you. I have some uh, chalk in my office I think belongs to y'all. Yes. So uh, somebody wants to come collect it. The Good. chalk on the sidewalk was excellent, yes. though. Good. All right. Thank you. Mr. Sanders, city manager report. Mayor, I'm going to yield my uh, time for business uh, until the LCI contract is discussed. But I do have one personal point of privilege. Um, it's been a tradition of mine to, uh, on Veterans Day, to at a at a public gathering or, or where I am with other people, to uh, to read a um, a very poignant um, short passage um, regarding our our military and the and the sacrifices they make over time. I met a gentleman a number of years ago named Jerry Camilleri from Vancouver, Washington, and, uh, um, and he presented this, and I'd like to present it to you. Donald A. Davis and Robert B. Pritchard. Jerry said, we were in Cambodia a month before the official action investigating an NVA stronghold in May of 69. These two airborne rangers died on either side of me. I survived because of them and their sacrifice. He has a personal Memorial Day service, Memorial service every Veterans Day. He has everyone within earshot repeat their names. The concept that is that as long as you and we 
repeat their names, and those names leave our lips, they'll live forever. So if you would please repeat after me, Don Davis and Bob Pritchard. Don Davis and Bob Pritchard. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Sanders. Uh, under invited guest, I also forgot to recognize uh, Ms. Linsky's government class visiting us here from South Gwinnett High School. I think this is the third and, and final group that's coming to watch our meeting, so y'all picked a good, a good one to come to tonight. Uh, we have nothing under tonight's consent agenda. We have no old business and no public uh, hearing. Under new business, Councilman Witz, is there a motion? For the resolution for the... Don't you have some things to add to the agenda? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Yes, I do. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd like to add to the agenda a discussion and uh, direction to staff on the Oak Road Park. There, as D, do you not have a second item? The second item is the resolution for the veterans. Okay. So that will become D and E. There's yes, a motion. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. That's seconded by Councilman Howard. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Six in favor, all those opposed, zero opposed, the agenda stands amended. Item A is to ratify the certified results of the November 5th, 2013 general election. Do I have a motion to ratify the election results? Motion to ratify. There is a motion by Councilman Emanuel. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Krause. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. That's six in favor, all those opposed, zero opposed, the results stand ratified. Item B is nomination and confirmation of Jackie Ginn to post six of the Planning Commission. Is there a motion to nominate Ms. Ginn? Motion to nominate Jackie Ginn to post six of the Planning Commission. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Howard. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. That's five in favor. All those opposed, that's one opposed. The motion stands approved. Item C, consideration action on a construction agreement between Georgia Department of Transportation and the City of Snellville. Mr. Sanders. This is an agreement between GDOT and the City of Snellville. It's really the first of three steps that will allow us to commence construction on the LCI improvements on Oak, Clower, and Wisteria. Uh, tonight, this agreement will, if, if approved, uh, and we're, the staff is heartily recommending approval, uh, We'll enter into an agreement where DOT and the federal government will pay $2,022,000 towards that project, or 80%. We believe that number is well within budget uh, with a little bit to spare. Uh, the other important item in here is a timeline for completion of the project. Substantial completion would have to be done by October 15th of next year with final completion by December the 15th. We feel like we can meet that, uh, uh, those deadlines easily also. Uh, so I would recommend approval of this agreement with Georgia DOT. Is there a motion to approve the agreement? Motion to approve the agreement. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor signify by raising yeah. your right hand. It's discussion, Madam, it's, Madam Chair. It's not, a, it's not a public hearing. It's, we can't discuss it. It's, it's, it's just a motion that we're making and voting on. Do you have something you need to discuss to make your mind up? I believe, I, I believe Councilwoman uh, Bender does. Okay. Just wanted to make a comment on this. It's, it's really unbelievable that this is my first meeting back and we're um, finally taking action on a construction agreement on the LCI. When I first joined the council in 2005, it was uh, right after the city had been granted this $2 million grant to do these improvements. And since 2005, the city's been working on trying to get this project done. And three years ago, about this time, I was promised that we would be in construction by July of 2011. So I guess this is the rate the government works at, but uh, it's just really great that I'm here when we're now finally getting this project to this point. All those in favor of the motion as stated, signify by raising your right hand. Six in favor, all those opposed, zero opposed, the motion stands approved. That then brings us to item D, uh, discussion on Oak Road Passive Park. Councilman Witt, Mayor Pro Tem Witt. Thank you. Um, the discussion is, is basically this. Um, 
As I understand it, uh, Mr. Sanders, you have received bids for, well, first of all, we set aside $150,000 to begin the park and to go in there and do some clearing out and to basically get a trail cut out so that we could start the Passive Park project. Um, it's my understanding that we you have a bid which is not completely vetted at this point, but the low bid of $28,000, so that we're, we're going to be substantially below the amount that we have set aside out of the SPOS fund. And I guess m my discussion about this is I'd like to discuss this with council and get council's input that we continue to move forward on that. Uh, if that 28000 or whatever figure is finally vetted, and approved by council that we immediately continue to move forward with that project and whatever the next step the staff seems feels would be necessary to bring that to us as soon as possible so that we can continue to move forward with that we'll be glad to do that we're meeting with the contractor on Wednesday afternoon uh, or Wednesday morning and afternoon to make sure that uh, um, their numbers and and their ideas are the same as ours uh, and we hope to bring that contract approval of that contract back to you at the next meeting. Uh, we'll also discuss with the contractor um, potential future steps. The reason this is important is because um, one of the main things that have been the complaint of the people in that part of town is there are no sidewalks up, up uh, Oak Road. It's never been able to be funded project in this plus because it didn't score high enough. You have to have a higher score in order to get funded. If not, you're just an unfunded, yeah, maybe someday we can do that for the county. The, not us, but basically for the county. In discussions with the chairman and also with our, our commissioner, it came apparent to us that if, if we could get that park started by doing the work that we're doing now, that would give it a, some points, bring the score up. And then if the city would make that sidewalk a priority on their 2014 SPLOSP that passed this past week, the county would also do that in, to help us so that we could move forward and get those sidewalks done. We're further being helped by the fact that Racetrack now is going to improve that corner and they're going to, be in, uh, they're going to have to do all the pedestrian work on that corner, which is going to save us some money. So we can maybe basically going to get this done for about one half or less than what it would have cost us if we did it on our own. So it's important that we keep moving on it so that nothing stops us when the county says, yes, we're ready to go. So that, that's the reason for it. Okay. That then brings us to item number E.